All right, we're ready to get started again. We've been talking about the ocean, and we talked about the waves, and we were talking about the way that when you had the little peaks, and then you could put a dot below, a dot above, two dots, three dots, two dots below. Just want to remind us a little bit before we move to the next part of what we're doing with the Arabic and English, is that when you see a dot by itself below the line, you can assume that's going to be the sound of B below. If you see a single dot above the line and it's a stick, only a stick under it, then you can say N -n noon. If there are two dots, you can say T. And if you see a, a set of three dots and there's just a single stick, then you can say Th for three. And that's th as in with. It's real light. Three. With. It's a very light th sound. Then two dots below the line, and we said yeah. Let's move now to the next series of the letters. And this is kind of fun because we're going to use what some of the things we already know and come up with these sounds. The first one, these, this is a series that I heard somebody call the pot belly family because of the way that their stomachs look. Look at, watch this. Look at that. Boy, I'll tell you now, there's a stomach for you, isn't it? <laughs> and this one is the letter Ha. And the letter Ha has a special kind of a sound with it that you don't notice right away, but whenever you're wearing glasses and you need to clean them, you get that sound when you go Ha. Ha! That is the sound of this pot-bellied fellow right here. That's ha! Don't confuse that because there's a similar letter to it going to be coming up in a few minutes. So this is the ha, like when you blow on a glass or your glasses or uh, clean a mirror or something like that. So this is ha. He has a cousin that looks just like him, only it, there's his belly button right there. <laughs> His name is Jim. So whenever you see ha, but he's got this, that's Jim. And so this is the sound of an H. This is the sound of a J, J. Now watch this one. Again, another one of their relatives. But instead of having his belly button out there, you see a little dot right above there like that, kind of like an eye, like he's looking at you. And that's Ha. Ha. This is a sound you're pronouncing by making a little sound in the back of your throat. Ha. Ha. You practice on that one a little bit. We'll go over it again here. That is ha, ja, and ha. And it's usually represented in English with K and H. Like that. Now, there's another cousin, distant cousin to these guys, and he looks like this. Kind of similar, but you notice it's different. Instead of going this way, it comes back this way and then down. And this guy's name is Ein. In Ein, you kind of squeeze the back of your throat when you pronounce this one. And I, I was told that they don't have this in English, and I said, well, wait a minute. Ein, ein. I believe we do have that in English, especially down in Texas where I'm from, because we say it all the time. I ain't going to do it. So that's ein, and usually it's pronounced like, or spelled like this, I-A-I-N uh, like this, okay? Ein. But often they'll put an apostrophe right there and that indicates that little ah, pinching you do in the back of your throat. Ein. There's a similar one. Just the same way, only it'll have a dot over it. And that's rein. Now the way I usually tell people to remember these is if you were down south in the southern part of the United States and your mother told you to do something, and you said, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. And she said, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. So that's ein and rein. And that maybe help us remember it. 
There's some more that have this big sort of a stomach look, but it's a little bit different. We're going to put those right down here. Now watch this. Watch close. Looks like a W. But now we're going to drop down like this. That's seen. Have you ever seen anything that looked like this? See how that is? Seen. Now there's a relative to this one. they got a lot of relatives in the Arabic, don't they? And we're going to put three dots above that one. It's pretty easy to tell this one. You have seen. You have those three right there in a group. No dots. And then sheen like this. Now here you've got three dots and you've got the three stems coming up. Now this one is seen like a regular S and this one is sheen. There you are. Now keep in mind all the time that when we're working with this you want to use what you already know. Don't try to make it difficult and don't try to learn more than what we're presenting at each stage because we will go into the different levels God willing, inshallah, and be able to bring all of the letters out and how to put them together. But for right now, let's just focus on what we've got in front of us here. And then the next letter I want to go to is going to surprise you because you're going to think, well, wait a minute, we already did that. This is a saw lettering. Saw. This is seen and this is sawed. Sawed. Now, you might say, well, why do they sound alike? Well, I tell you what, they don't really sound alike, especially when you use them in a word. The difference between sa and saw, saw, sa. This one right here, you smile when you say it. Seen, but this one, sad. And you see, it says s a d, sad. A little bit sad. When you say it, say sad. I'm sad. I've seen someone who was sad. Seen sad. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. Is there going to be another one here? And guess what? There sure is. And he doesn't get three dots. He gets only one dot. But his name's not Shod. <laughs> There's no Shod in Arabic. But this guy has something so unique and it's so distinguished about him that they named, uh, nicknamed the Arabic alphabet or the Arabic language after him. And this is called Baud. Baud. Why? Because there's no other language on earth that has this letter Baud. And this one, I want you to go to someone who is an Arab that speaks the native Arabic language and watch them pronounce it. Because I can explain it and talk to you and you can think about it all you want and practice, but without somebody showing you and you doing it, you're never going to get it perfect. But it's Baud. Baud. Bawd. You're doing some stuff in the back of your throat, moving your mouth a funny way, but most people that don't know Arabic, when they pronounce it, they just pronounce another D. But it's not. It's actually Bawd. And this is Saad and Bawd. Got it?